So once you have posed the model, it's probably now a good time to show you how to render within ZBrush, just in case you want to know how to do that. So first thing I'm going to do is, since we're rendering within ZBrush, we can use any of the materials for any of the areas here. So say I want to select the eyes, the eyes. So I'm going to change the material for those so that they look a little more sh more shiny, more like an eyeball. So for this one, I'm going to select the toy plastic, and I'm going to enable material channel here, and go to color, fill object, and that's going to fill that with that material. So now let's get everything back. So right now you see that that material seems to be applied to the to the whole model, but it was only applied to the uh, to the eyeballs. So we can go back here and select back the skin shape four. Now we go back to that material, but the eyeballs have that you know, shiny toy plastic material that we apply to it. So now let's get into a good pose, I mean angle here for our render, kind of like, uh, kind of like this view right here, something like this. And if you wanted to cast a shadow, we have to enable the floor, okay? And if you see that the floor is uh, too low or too high, you can always adjust it if you come to draw. And we have uh, a few options here to for the elevation of the grid. If you want, if you had it too, if you have it too high or too low, you can go there and adjust that. So let's get to uh, an angle that you like for the render. And first, I'm going to go to my highest division level, of course. So once you're at the highest subdivision level you're happy how the render looks, how everything's going to look, the camera angle. So the easiest way of going about this, you can just press BPR right here. That's the easiest way. You don't have to change any of the settings and, it, and you get a somewhat decent render. But if you really want to adjust everything else, actually first let's add a few lights. So if you come here, I have the light option. First you see that there's one light right now available. And if you want to create more, click here. Click twice actually. You see that an extra light was added to it. And we can change the intensity. So this one's going to be our key light. This one's going to be our fill light. Or we opposite to the to the key light. So let's add a rim light. And for this one we're going to increase the intensity a bit. You have to play with it until you get uh, the look that you're expecting. So maybe that, and we can change the color as well. Maybe kind of a yellow color. And it can be any color that you like. Also, if you click on the actual, this dot, click on that, you can see that it changes the type of light. I think this one's a normal light, and this will be a fill light, I mean a rim light. Let's say you're happy with the lighting. So now that you have your light, we can you can adjust the render settings. Let me click here to open this area and 
click here and drag. Let me close this area here. So here in the render area, you see that first you have four options. So preview is what you're normally working on. There's a fast render, a best render, but these are not uh, for really final results. For ev all your final results, the better choice is to just click here, BPR, best preview render. And if you want to change some of the properties, you can add uh, ambient occlusion or sub surface scattering, which are the two that I normally enable. If you enable subsurface scattering, make sure that under the lights and go to light properties, make sure that that is enabled here as well. So let's actually go ahead and enable those. I've been occlusion subsurface scattering and enable that here for this one. Let's do that for the rim light as well. So here you're going to have some render passes. You're going to get those once you render. So there's nothing there right now. So for the shadow, if you want to get a more you know, softer shadow, you can adjust the angle here. I'm going to set it a slightly higher and adjust the rays as well. Resolution, change that as well. You can change the attributes for the ambient occlusion and the subsurface scatter as well. So are pretty much the the options that you have. You can also get a background here. So I say these are good options here for rendering. So now that we're ready, again, if you want to get a shadow, cast a shadow on the floor, you have to enable that or else you're not going to get that. Also, you can change the document size if you want to get a more higher resolution picture so see that your uh, default size is this one you can always change that to whatever you want just make sure that you hit new document first and then change that and press new document and then you're going to have to drag the model again and you may lose the lighting when you do that so you might want to do that first before you start lighting so okay, now we're ready and just hit PPR render and we should be getting a somewhat decent render. So now that you see, we get a, it's a fairly decent render. The shadow may be a little too hard, but uh, again, you can change those settings under the shadow, shadow op options. <coughs> so now what if you want to, so how do you save this image? So in order to save it, you go to document and export. It's normally going to save it as a PSD, I believe. So now that you saved it and you can go back to our render settings here, you see that you get some render passes as well. So get the shaded, depth, the shadow, and we were using ambient occlusion as well as a mask, subsurface scatter. The ones I like to use if you want to change the background, like say you can save the mask. So if you click on it, you're going to save it. And I normally use the shadow as well so I can get that shadow back if you wanted to. I mean, you can use all these back in Photoshop or something to make adjustments to the final render. So this is pretty much how you render within ZBrush. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward.